Travis of Boss Tables here. Today we're going to go over digital torch light control, why it's important, when it's used, and when it's not used is essentially uh, a thing that a lot of people overlook. So, digital torch height is a measurement from your torch tip to the bottom of your plate. Now, that measurement can be affected by the length, of, the the height of your plate, the thick, the thickness of the material is the same thing, I guess. Sorry, the the different consumables that you use, whether it's fine cut consumables, 45, 65, 85, 200 amp, 400 amp, 130, 260, right? So all of those are very, very important. If you choose the wrong consumables, you will have improper results. You'll either have the torch crashing into the material or it'll be riding too high. So you choose the correct consumables with the correct material, essentially, in general, this is gonna work just fine. But the, when People make mistakes, a lot of times the torch will then dive into the material. What it's doing is the controller takes that measurement of voltage from the power unit, that measurement comes from the power unit and is given to the controller. The controller then drives the Z-axis up and down to maintain that set voltage. So whether it's 126 volts or 168, the controller is always trying to find that measurement on a straight or slight arc cut. It does not want to measure it in a sharp corner or on circles. So if you have the incorrect material, the incorrect consumables, what will happen is the torch, if it's set too low at 120, but let's say you're cutting, you know, half inch, vice versa, and you should be at 168, but it's set to 120, it will then drive itself into the plate, knocking off the torch, throwing the machine into e-stop. So, if you have it set too high, it will then cut maybe an inch above the material, start scarring the material. In general, that is not correct. We want to maintain, let's say, about 60 thou to an eighth of an inch, depending on. This is all in the cut charts. Every set of consumables is different, um, so you really want to pay attention. That is absolutely imperative to get good cut quality. Now, we do not use digital torch eye control in holes. We slow down in a hole to, to allow the air to keep the arc straighter. The flame is magnetic, it is not perfect, so therefore we're using air in a swirling type motion to physically force it out and maintain a straighter cut. And we're slowing it down to let the arc get pushed around and be straighter via the air. So you do not run your digital torch height. A lot of times we will have people that will call and say, my machine cuts the holes just fine, but then it gets to an outer profile cut and then it dives or it rides too high. And the reason being is we may have a slightly incorrect setting and we can cut the holes just fine because we're running them at, let's say, 40 to 60% of the you know rated cut speed. But then once it goes to do a perimeter cut and it turns on the digital torch height, it crashes or it rides too high. We get a lot of calls on it. It's very, very common. And if you mess it up, it's not the end of the world. Just go back to the beginning, make sure in CAM that you have the correct material, the correct uh, consumables chosen, make sure that the tool is even correct. We've had some guys that'll call us and they're, hey, go, we're running uh, 125 amps on eighth inch. Well, you can if you make a custom tool and, you know, but you're way outside the cut charts. In general, especially when you're just starting, don't go crazy, do what's in the book, and you're gonna have good, consistent results. Another thing for cut quality that a lot of guys overlook is in general, the slower you go, the more slag you're gonna have, but the better cut quality you're gonna have. The faster you go, the less slag, but the less defined results, because the, the arc, is the diameter is essentially bigger, creating a larger kerf, and essentially, you're not gonna get as tight inside corners, just as a real quick hint for good plasma cutting.